Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Birthday Salon. I'm Hazira, we have Chris. Chris, Hello. say hi. Hello, okay. And then today with us, we have Stephen Shah. We are very interested in his essay that was written for the 2017 birthday book. And his essay is titled, Savoring the Best Life. And it's about how how his family is really, really important and how he puts it above the other things. So mm. the theme of the 27, 2017 birthday book is what we must never forget. And for us, I guess, you know, always to start off the conversation, we would like to contextualize the article a bit. Stephen, what was going through your mind when you wrote this article? Why did you choose this as a response to the prompt, what we must never forget? Yeah, to, be, to be honest, I, I can't recall. Uh, I mean, it was uh, uh, probably because the deadline was looming and uh, mm. you know, I had been asked by uh, someone to write this article and, and I, as I said, I thought like, what can I write about? But I, I guess people who know me will know that uh, family is very much a, an issue that I, I always mm. talk about and it concerns mm. me because... Uh, in the kind of lifestyle we lead nowadays, I feel that very often we're caught up in doing a lot of things, but mm. family can sometimes take a back burner, you know. Uh, so being a father with two young-ish kids, I mean, this was a few years ago, they were younger, but now, now they're 14 and 10. Mm. Uh, I wanted to, I guess, share some of my experiences and just perhaps to hopefully remind people as to, you know, the, the value of parenting and I guess uh, some of the joys that you can get with it. So mm. yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm. Thank you so much for that, Stephen. I think just to jump on this, uh, uh, what Hazira just shared, uh, I was very moved by one of the lines that you mentioned mm. in your chapter, mm. that a child cannot differentiate between quality time and mm. non-quality time. I was just wondering, uh, what prompted you to have that realisation? Very often you hear your friend saying, uh, you know, I didn't have much time to be home, but we, we spend quality time together. Yeah. You know, so it got me thinking one day that, I don't think the kids can tell the difference. And I'm talking about young kids, kids who are, you know, mm. less than eight years old, that kind of thing. Mm. To them, any time that the parent is home with them is quality time, mm. you know, and, and it doesn't have to be doing anything. I, I spent a lot of time when the kids were younger, uh, taking them to the supermarket. And, and that's because I used to work in the morning show. So I had my mm. afternoon free and, mm. and I had to go and run errands to buy food mm. and groceries and I would bring the kids along with them. So that became the time I spent with them, you know. I, I don't mm. think any parent would say that's quality time, you know, because of what we were doing. Mm. But my interpretation is that the more time you spend with them, all of it is quality time to them. Mm. You know, the kids can't differentiate whether it's well spent or spent doing so-called rubbish, you know. As long as you're mm. with them, I think they enjoy that time together. And that's why I've always encouraged parents, especially when the kids are young, to spend as much time as possible. Even if you do nothing, you know, even if you sit together and just kind of hang out. I mean, I think that is still quality time for the kids. I like that thought, right? Of there not being a distinction between quality and quantity time for younger children. But I'm wondering, because now you've said that your children are a bit older, um, does that mean that, how do you say this? Do you feel that that, dis that lack of a distinction still holds? Or how would you think about maybe changing the way you spend your time with your children now yeah. that they're a bit older? No, nah, I see where you're coming with it. And, and mm. because as we get older, we mature, right? And the kids mm. will, will have different activities, mm. uh, different hobbies. They, uh, as they become teenagers, they rather spend more time with their friends rather than with their parents. So I think at some point, it's, it does sort of move a little bit to quality time. I mean, the, mm. still, the kids still love having, knowing that their parents are around a lot, mm. you know, but they don't need to hang out as much. Whereas when they're young, I mean, a kid loves to hug their parents, snuggle in bed with them. You know, any kind of mm. physical interaction is so, so, it makes them feel so good. When you're older, and I guess, you know, especially I can imagine my son when he's 15, he'll be too cool for me, right? You know, so, <laughs> so at that point in time, I think it will move a little bit away from the quantity towards mm. the type of activity and the type of time we spend together. Mm. So thank you for that, uh, Stephen. Going back to your article, I'm curious to hear a bit more when you mentioned that, you know, why do we put off the best parts of ourselves till later? And I'm just wondering what prompted you to come up with that very poignant reflection and question. Yeah. Uh, it, it's how you look at life. I, I always imagine when you go out and buy your favorite dish, let's say it's nasi lemak, it comes with mm. fried chicken. Mm. Do you, if you love the fried chicken the most, do you eat the fried chicken <laughs> last or do you eat it first? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I eat it first. I, I love to have it along the way, but I would not wait to save it to the last, you know, because what happens if I'm eating halfway and there's an emergency, there's a fire, I have to run out. Then I don't eat my fried chicken at all, right? So 
Interesting. Oh, I've never thought of it that way. <laughs> also in a highly philosophical way, you know. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, so I'm saying when you have good things, and very often when you have something nice, some good cutlery, some china, mm. my parents mm. used to mm. always keep it, right? Don't yeah. use only very special occasions. But I'm saying, use it, enjoy it now. Mm. Ten years later, you may open it and it's broken already, you know. So, mm. so it, it seems a waste to have not yeah. savoured the moment when the moment is right in front of you. Right. If I can push you a bit more on that point, Stephen, which I think is very interesting. How do you reconcile what you just shared, for example, with, say, questions of immediate gratification? You know? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So cheap. For me, these difficult questions. <laughs> it, it is an issue because in this day and age, we all want things instantly, right? Mm. Uh, but I think it's a, it's, a different, uh, it's a different thing altogether mm. because when you want something straight away, it's kind of... I don't know, a reward for something you've done or you, you want the answer right away. Mm. In this case, it's stuff that you already have. I guess you're not really mm. working towards it. Mm. You know I mean? The, the food is there. It mm. comes with those, the egg, the ikan bilis and the fried chicken. It's just right. which you choose to indulge in first. Right, right. Mm. If I was doing something just to get the fried chicken, then I think right. it'd be a slightly different perspective. Right, right. Yeah, thank you for that distinction. I think that's a good one because, and also I, I just wanted to yeah. point out that I love the language that is being used. It's like savor and indulge. Mm. Uh, I'm feeling hungry. Just check. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I mean, just to push the nasi lemak metaphor a little bit mm. more. For me, yeah, I love the chicken wing bit for the nasi lemak, mm. right? But maybe because of the, the my family upbringing, I will not eat the chicken wing first simply because my mom and dad would be like, you should cut the chicken a little bit, put with the rice, put a little bit of the sambal, put a little bit of the ikan balis, and then you shake it all together, you know? So, yeah. And so I'm just wondering also, like, on that note, right, uh, going back to your point, mm, actually, uh, I'll just pause there because my mind is thinking of the nasi lemak. Maybe, Hazira, you go ahead first. You, you are. <laughs> but you have actually... You have actually highlighted, you're, you're the in-between guy. So you're not saving it to the end, you're not having it all at first, you're kind of spreading it out, spreading the joy over a period of time. So you will have, I guess, half the enjoyment if a fire breaks out. <laughs> right? Yeah, interesting, interesting analogy about a fire point though. But just like, you, know, uh, you, you mentioned you have kids, right? I think I'm not so much the middle perspective as I am the obedient child. <laughs> <laughs> listening to my parents. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, after talking to you, I might go and get Nasulama and eat the chicken wing first. <laughs> so. I'm kind of just reflecting on that, right? The distinction between whether you drop everything to go and get something you don't already have or you know, or wait, how do I rephrase this? Like, I, I know, I just, I just think it's interesting that, you know, in response to the idea of instant gratification, for you, it's not so much that you are trying to get something that you don't already have, but with what you have that you should appreciate I guess what for you, you feel is the best part of it. I mean, to the nasi lemak question, I'm the kind of person who saves the best thing for last okay. um, with food. Though, because I have many, many siblings, like I have four younger siblings, I... It depends, like, it depends. I usually try to hide the things that I want to eat. <laughs> Because somebody else will steal the chicken yeah, wing, right? <laughs> correct. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting to think about, like, oh, these are the things that I have, and then out of what I have, this is what I feel is best. And for you, I think from the article, it comes across very strongly that it is family. Mm. So I was just wondering, I guess, what are the other things that you think about along those like things that are great, like things in your life that you do or like look forward to? So to the end, I guess, what the what are the priorities and then how that list goes? Mm. I guess just to, just to finish that analogy, I mean, the reason why I say enjoy it first is because these are the things that are, right in front of you. I mean, your, your mm. kids are there with you, you know, it's not like mm. you have to, to, to get them, you know, they are part of your daily experience. So a lot of times people will say, let me focus on my career first, mm. save enough money, get nice house, car, whatever, mm. then I'll spend time with my kids. Mm. But my point is that they've been waiting for you all those years when they were there with you yeah. right from the start. So why push it mm. to the end? And it becomes a different issue of what do you prioritize in life? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. and I think to some extent, especially in the kind of lifestyle we lead here in Singapore, we need to make a concerted effort. We need to say, I want to make an appointment to, to, with my kid. You know, you, you almost, you plan it. You don't just say, okay, mm -hmm. like, if I have time, I finish work early today, I'll yeah. come home. Yeah. But you actually say, I will be home and then work will come mm -hmm. later, you see. Mm -hmm. It's not an answer for all. And I think different mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. have to find that mm -hmm. balance on their own. Mm -hmm. But just hoping that people can remember that the kids... When they're young, they want to hang out with you. 
when they're older, they don't really want to hang out with you. I mean, you know, you guys, if your parents came to you now and say, come, don't you know, you'd be like less keen, right? <laughs> Yeah. I would, yeah, I would happily have nasi lemak with them. But when I was younger, <laughs> I will see. But actually, going back to your point, Stephen, I think mm. you really brought up the, the awareness of missed opportunities. I think mm. one is a bit more, uh, less intentional to what, to what you mentioned, you know, to, uh, about time. And the opportunity costs are real, like what mm. you mentioned. And I'm just wondering, so on that point, you mentioned in your article about, you know, creating pockets of time. And you mm. mentioned about just now also, you know, fixing, scheduling yeah. appointments with your children. I was just wondering whether you could share with our viewers as well. Are there other strategies that you have tried in your life that allows you to then have these pockets of time that you can spend well with your family? Um, no, I, I don't really have any planned strategies. I'm, I count myself fortunate in the sense that I had a job for many years that allowed me to be home in the afternoons because I used to mm. read the news, the early morning news program. Mm. So I was home by you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I, I had time to be with the kids. So I think I was very blessed that way. Mm. Uh, in terms of strategies, there is, there is no method that, or there no template that I can share with anyone because everyone is different and all of mm -hmm. us have different family dynamics. So I think it's mm -hmm. more about if you want to make your children a priority and you choose to do that, then as they say, if there's a will, there's a way. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, i give you an example of how in... Uh, in, in the US, for example, I went to visit my cousin who was working there for a few years. And he said, you know, we, we start work promptly at 8.30, but by 5.30, the office is empty. Mm. Lunch is strictly mm. like 45 minutes, you know, and people don't really spend a lot of time hanging around cubicles, talking to each other. So mm. the day is productive, but mm. that's because they want to go home early. Mm. Whereas here, I think we sometimes are guilty of like, you know, you hang out, then, mm. you know, oh, 7 o'clock, then I'll go home, you know. Uh, so it's just a choice. I guess mm. well. I think that's a very good reminder, Stephen, yeah. that we have a choice, and that mm. we have agency, and our environment doesn't necessarily dictate uh, um, these, these things. Maybe a last point for me before I pass the time back to Hazira. I really like also your, your point in your uh, chapter that you mentioned, when work becomes the play, then you're in big trouble because it means you love work more than you love life. Or for example, you also mentioned that living consists of work and play, but work was actually created to sort play. I was just wondering, from your experience so far, doing what you like at work, would you ever consider work as play though? Yeah, playfully enjoying work in that way. Yeah. No, I, I mean, definitely. I, I enjoy my work and I think that is a, a, a pivotal thing for many of us. If we mm. enjoy what we're doing, then it doesn't really feel like work. Mm. But I guess what I was really getting at is that when you're going to work to almost mm. run away from something else. Mm. Mm. So work becomes the excuse you know, mm. instead of running out to play, you're running to work so that you don't have to play, <laughs> you know? Mm. And mm. that's, I guess, where the danger is because I, I've seen cases where people will say, oh, uh, you know, I have to do this at work. I have to do mm. that. Um, so I can't come to your birthday party, you know? Mm. Mm. Is it, are you therefore using that work as an mm. excuse? Right. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. Whereas I feel that in the beginning, work was just there to help you pay the bills, right? Yeah. So that you yeah. have more time playing. Mm. So somewhere along the way, for some of us, I think that dynamic has changed a little bit and that balance perhaps may not be mm. as balanced. Right, right. Yeah, thank mm. you for that. I think the clarity really mm. helps. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Hazira. No, it's just, I think, okay, I, I think it's partly also just because of the similarity of the words that I use, right? So thinking of word as work as play and then, versus the saying that goes, oh, you know, if you love what you do, you are never working for the rest of your life. Mm. Um, no. Okay, wait. But play is not present there. Okay. <laughs> Some <laughs> ideas, it doesn't feel like work, right? You're working, but you're enjoying the work. And I think that's very mm. important too. We must find, mm. you know, the worst is to be stuck in a job where you hate going to work and mm. every day you go, you yeah. know, but don't, don't let the work, I guess, become the excuse that you can use mm. to, to, I mean, uh, to run away mm. from your wife. Something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I just, I can't help but think that, like, this is something that I hear more often in Singapore, definitely, right? That oh, I can't do this because I have to do this piece of work. I can't do this because I need to do this. I need to do this. And I think beyond a certain, like, you know, at a certain point, that's necessary to know that there are certain things that you have to 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 fulfill. But at the same time, that it shouldn't be the reason for not spending time with people who are important to you. So I guess if, to you, if, you, if you think about it, if you really wanted to, for example, uh, take up archery, mm. let's say, and you, you find you have a packed schedule, but if you really wanted to do it, yeah. 
would you not find a way to make time for it? Mm. So in, in that same frame, uh, I mean, I think if we want to do something enough, we will find a way. The work can, you can move it, you can juggle your schedules, you can find another well, pocket of time in a way to, mm. to do that work, right? Mm. But it's what do you prioritize at this point in time? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the one question I have with this is that I think choices, like certain choices are easier to make when you're at certain stages of life, definitely. Yeah. And in your article, you also said something about how like, oh, you know, it, I think at certain points, people should be able to tell their bosses that, no, I don't want to do this now because it is my, like maybe my father's birthday or my mother's mm-hmm. or like my wedding anniversary or something like that. And as a boss, you know, you would respect that because in fact, you would think more highly of the person because then it's very clear that the person has their priorities in mm-hmm. a certain way. I guess like my question to that is, you know, if you are very, very junior and you really think that the family, you know, there's a certain family event that you really, really cannot miss out on, but then there are certain expectations that you have at work, then how would you advise someone in that situation? Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I know in many, in many corporate culture, the, the, a lot of places of work, sometimes you feel a bit afraid to speak to your boss, you know, hmm. uh, the dynamics are different. Uh, I think you should still... First of all, it's got to be the right time and place to, to make mm. that request. Don't do it the day before you need to show up. You know, I mean, mm. give your boss ample warning. Go mm. speak to him privately and explain your situation. And don't just say, I want time off, but offer mm. a solution and say, I can't do it on the Wednesday, but I can come back on mm. the Thursday instead and I will finish it up then, even though mm. it's a public holiday. Mm. So I think mm. if your boss has seen that you are still making the effort mm. and not trying to just skive away from the mm. issue, you yeah. know, I, I think, mm. yeah, they will respect you for that. I mean, you think about it. If you were in a position mm. where you were running a company and one of your junior staff came to you mm. and said, I need time off. I mean, it's not just time off, but tell me you still need to yeah. finish this project by next Wednesday. How are you yeah. going to do it? Yeah. If you can give me solutions and still finish it, then more reason for me to say, sure, go mm. ahead. Mm. Yeah. I think echoing that, uh, mm. Hazira and uh, Stephen, mm. I think I'm hearing a lot about accountability, right? Being, yeah. being responsible and valuing one's time. I think, uh, Stephen, your point about offering alternatives is a really good advice yeah. to share and to yeah. offer solutions in that way. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering also at this juncture, Stephen, do you have any questions for us given that we've been asking you quite a fair bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, no, no, not today. Uh, it's okay. You can do all the interviewing. Uh, <laughs> <normally do all. laughs> yeah. I'm happy to just share, you know. Is it a refreshing perspective to be on the receiving end <laughs> this time around? <laughs> yeah. I, I think I enjoy being on both sides of, of it. You know, it. It's a conversation that we have. And what I'm enjoying is that I, I'm realizing that, I mean, to be honest, when I wrote it, I did not have all these big ideas of what I was mm. writing. It was mm. a very way just something i was sharing so mm. to have you ask me these questions and to then make me think oh yeah i never thought of it that way you know mm. that for me yeah. is something that is interesting thank you thank you for mm. that and that's always uh, something that uh, hazira and i would like to do yeah. for the larger community for students for educators so um hazira no i like that you shared that you know you didn't have all these big ideas in mind but it was really just a reflection so i was just wondering to that effect well do you have an intended audience for the piece like who are you thinking like who are you thinking of when you said like oh you know um kids can't really differentiate between quality and quantity like young children can't differentiate between quality and quantity time or that we should have certain like you know family should come first and we should make certain sacrifice like we should make certain decisions that will allow us to and like live life in the way we intended to was there a particular honestly speaking i had no one in mind i had no specific target audience i wrote it uh, purely uh, as a piece of you know that was mm. kind of what I was thinking about at that point mm. in time mm. Um, mm. I know the, the book sort of reaches out to a very large mm. demographic so yeah. I did not plan for this to be at any targeted group Sure. I mean, and, and I'm glad to, to know that in a way after it was published that different people at different levels resonated with it in different ways right. so mm. for me that was a real a bonus you know but mm. uh, I, just, I just come out and write stuff and speak my mind and yeah. Hope something makes sense along the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, Stephen, mm. if you were to say write another article now, mm. given that your children are, as you mentioned, ten and fourteen already, mm. what, what do you reckon would be different about what you what you write, <laughs> or what would you emphasize more, perhaps? Or mm. yeah, what would you emphasize more? Maybe de-emphasize uh, in yeah. other aspects. I can't tell you what I would write, but I will say this: that yeah, depending on what stage of life I am at. Mm. 
mm. much of my thoughts will be reflected, mm. you know, about that stage of life, just because that is what I'm encountering at that point in time. Mm. Uh, so I remember years ago when uh, I think my daughter was about five years old, a magazine mm. asked me to write a letter to my daughter. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so that was quite, that was really quite, I mean, because when I sat down to do it and I thought, mm what would I want to tell her, you know? Mm-hmm. And so when you, you make that effort, different things come to mind. But mm. yeah, if you ask me to write a letter to her now, you know, <laughs> it would be very different from the one I wrote to her when she was five years old. Mm. And I think your response mm. on that, Stephen, all the more reflects the main point, right, of your article mm. that we are present mm. to each other at, and we bring our mm. best selves to each other every time. Yeah. Because like what you mentioned, you write a different article, or a different letter to your daughter in different stages of her life, for example, and it has to be different because nobody is static and unchanged mm. that way. So I think all the more on that note also, we have to eat the best, the, the chocolate that we like the most at the start, right, rather than at the end. Because I, I thought that was an interesting starting and the very nice bookend mm. to your article, right? You started mm. off the chocolate, you ended, and I think somewhere in the middle you said, actually at this time really my caramel and my other chocolate is already finished. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, <laughs> you, you ended off with the chocolates as well. I no, think, I think yeah, go, go ahead. No, I was just going to share an observation, I guess, that mm. Stephen, you shared that, you know what, you would tell your daughter at age 5 and age 14 are very, very different things. Mm. Partly because, you know, the child has grown quite a bit since then and also because we are different as people as at different stages of life. And it just made me think a bit about my siblings because I, as I'm the oldest and my younger sister is 10. So there's quite a big age gap between us. Mm. So to that effect, the way our parents raise us is quite different. And I think I see a lot of what you have written in the article with how they are raising her because the time that they have with her is kind of like less mm-hmm. and that they're in a different space. So they are like spending a lot a lot more time. Yeah, but this so this is just a point of reflection more than a question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean you guys you guys are still young, you know, and, and Thank uh, you. to be honest, I mean in, in your twenties I, I don't know I I was definitely not thinking anything meaningful at that time. I was just, you know, looking at having a good time. Um, but I think as you grow older, then different things happen along the way. Uh-huh. And, and one of the things that I've also noticed is that the, the relationship between my parents, and I have two older sisters, my sisters, mm. has changed entirely too. Mm. And as we mature, you know, that, mm. that relationship becomes a much deeper and more meaningful relationship. Mm. And, and you value them, you know, a lot more mm. than I guess when you were younger, just kind of arguing yeah. about who can use the, the phone or something like that. Yeah, there were no mobile phones at the time. We had mm. to share one landline. So that's why. <laughs> mm. So if anything at all, I, I guess I'll just say that I, when I, I share whatever I do share, it's just I hope that people will be able to see that there is so much life has to offer us. And mm. there are so many distractions as well. And it's very hard to prioritize. But mm. if we decide on a certain area and we can't be good at everything yeah um, then we can do that a bit more and we can indulge mm. ourselves in that a bit more mm. and with so much uncertainty in this day and age i think a lot of what we want to do is to prepare our next generation to to deal with the future unknown mm-hmm. uh, i don't know what kind of jobs my kids will be mm. doing mm-hmm. but i'm hoping mm. that i can prepare them in a way that mm. they will be able respond and to react to whatever changes are out there mm. you know so i think that is most important for parents and for everyone mm. out there now just to to have the understanding that we don't really have control of everything around us mm. yeah. so let's not yeah. keep trying to do that but just kind of live the moment to a certain degree of course within reason yeah. mm. on that note chris do you have any final questions before you Summarize. <laughs> Before yeah. you launch a dog good summary, yes. Wow, no pressure there. <laughs> yeah. So I think Stephen, once again, Hazir and I are very, very grateful and fortunate to have you with us in our workplace. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, and I think the the truths that you shared today, hopefully through through time is echoed further. I think mm. a lot of young parents especially would resonate with what you shared. Uh, and, and generally parents of all ages. And I think to me, once again, the the, the, the terms and the language that you used today was very telling of your entire ethos of your article about mm. indulging, about savoring, about bringing our best selves, you know, and enjoying the, and living the moment, as you mentioned. So I think in, in summary, though, the points that I've took note of from our conversation so far is, I think, Stephen, you have a very good sense of self in so far mm. as you're able to prioritize. I think that's very important because to prioritize also suggests a certain sense of self-awareness, what mm. to say yes to, what to say no to. And I think that in itself allows for a better toggling between missed opportunities, realizing that one should not be 
should not use work as an excuse. And one also should draw boundaries. And I think what, what I heard from you today is also within the boundaries that we draw for you know, our families, for our work, we are then better able to bring our best selves and better able to live the moment. Paradoxically, within this beautiful confines of a boundary, because I think if there's no boundaries, mm. then maybe people draw boundaries for you. And then that becomes mm. very problematic. So within the boundaries also, we then are able to have choices. And I think even for uh, like what you shared about, you know, it's perfectly fine to ask for time off from your bosses, but also make an effort to offer solutions and alternatives. Mm. And I think these are evergreen classic truths that uh, needs to be echoed more <laughs> in, 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 in the society that we live in. Yeah. So I think generally, Hazira, that's what I got from what we shared today. Yeah. yeah, let me just, uh, and, and that whole idea about taking time off from work, because one, uh, someone shared with me once mm-hmm. that they had a, a new, you know, employee who was very young and she one day came and said, can I have a time off, you know, tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And said, why? Because it's my three week anniversary with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a bit mm-hmm. flabbergasted because, mm-hmm. so I think, yeah, again, <laughs> How do I say this? I mean, some things uh, are, are worth time off, but some things are not. So even if you had a solution for why you should have a three-week anniversary, I think, yeah, look at it in the larger context of things and, and use your time off cards uh, wisely as well. Mm. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, this is to say we, we did note that like that distinction in the article, but we weren't sure whether or not we wanted to bring it up. <laughs> we <were> like, <laughs> yeah, but okay, yeah, yeah, no, de- definitely right. I think because you do have a limited set of time out card, time out the time off time off cards. English. Yeah, I mean, if the, if three weeks is really a big deal be- with you because mm. you never made it beyond five days in the past, in the context of things, sometimes some things mm. warrant more than others, you know. So indeed, yeah, indeed, indeed. yeah. But yes, on that note, thank you, Chris, uh, for summarizing. Thank you, Stephen, for um, this conversation. Uh, we really appreciate it. I think we did really learn a lot, especially because um, we learned a lot that we could not know from just reading the article alone mm, yes, yeah. yes, which is yes. which is always like a really really good like indicator for us for how i guess enriching this conversation has been yes, but yes, yes. thank you everyone thank you for thank watching thank you this guys episode. i mean it's, it's been fun sharing and I, i've been happy to hear about different perspectives and you, you've also made me think about maybe i'll go back and reread my article actually <laughs> <laughs>